Da daksha, tam special fields mana wada? Ah, sports, music, ah, we are. Oh, sports ni mana wada? Al programming itu pun ada. Macam mana? Programming itu pun ada. Programming itu robotics. Computer programming. Oh. I was 13 when I first got access to a, a computer. My parents bought me a, uh, a Macintosh in 1984 when I was eight years old. I was in sixth grade. I learned to code in college. Freshman year, first semester, um, intro to computer science. I wrote a program to play tic-tac-toe. I think it was pretty humble beginnings. I think the first program I wrote asked uh, things like, what's your favorite color? Or how old are you? I first learned how to make a green circle and a red square appear on the screen. The first time I actually had something come up and say, hello world, and it, the, I made a computer do that, it was just astonishing. Learning how to program didn't start off as wanting to learn all of computer science or, um, or trying to master this discipline or anything like that. It just started off because I wanted to do this one simple thing. I wanted to make something that was fun for myself and, and my sisters. And I wrote this little program, and then basically just add a little bit to it. And then when I needed to learn something new, I looked it up, either in a book or on the internet, and then added a little bit to it. It's really not unlike kind of playing an instrument or something, or, 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 you know, or playing a sport. It starts out being very intimidating, but you kind of get the hang of it over time. Coding is something that can be learned, and um, I know it can be intimidating. A lot of things are intimidating, but, uh, you know, what isn't? A lot of the coding that people do is actually fairly simple. Um, it's, it's more about the process of breaking down problems than, uh, you know, sort of coming up with complicated algorithms as people traditionally think about it. You don't have to be a genius to know how to code. You need to be determined. Uh, Addition, subtraction, uh, that, that's about it. You should probably know your multiplication tables. <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to code. Do you have to be a genius to read? Even if you want to become a race car driver or play baseball um, or, uh, you know, build a house, all of these things have been turned upside down by software. What it is is, you know, computers are, are everywhere. You want to work in agriculture? <laughs> Do you want to work in entertainment? Do you want to work in manufacturing? You know, it's, it's just all over. Here we are, 2013. We all depend on technology to communicate, to bank, information, and none of us know how to read and write code. When I was in school, I was in this after school group called the Whiz Kids. And when people found out, they laughed at me and you know, all these things. And I'm like, man, I don't care. I think it's cool. And you know, I'm learning a lot. And some of my friends have jobs. Our policy is literally to hire as many talented engineers as we can find. The whole limit in the system is just that there just aren't enough people who are trained and have these skills today. Places where people can play or relax. Um, or go to think, or play music, or be creative. Whether you're trying to make a lot of money, or whether you just want to change the world, computer programming is an incredibly empowering skill to learn. I think if someone had told me that software is really about humanity, that it's really about helping people by using computer technology, it would have changed my outlook a lot earlier. To be able to actually come up with an idea and then see it in your hands and then be able to press a button and have it be in millions of people's hands. Uh, I mean, I think we're the first generation in the world that's really ever had that kind of experience. Just to think that I mean, you can start something in you know, your college dorm room and you can have a set of people who haven't built a big company before come together and build something that a billion people use as part of their, their daily lives is, is just crazy to think about, right? It's really, it's humbling and it's amazing. The programmers of tomorrow are the wizards of the future. You know, you're gonna look like you have magic powers compared to everybody else. I think it's amazing. It's, I think it's the closest thing we have to a superpower. Great coders are today's rock stars. That's it. People make decisions every day. Uh, for example, before you go outside, you kind of have an if statement that says, if it's raining, then I need to get my jacket. And computers are amazing once you decide 
those kinds of statements that they can reliably execute those things at unbelievable speed. And so a computer program really uh, is a little bit of math and some if statements uh, where the decision gets made. So in, in this puzzle, the if block helps the zombie make a decision. Right. It checks something. For example, let's use the block that says if there's a path to the left and put a turn left command inside it. So we're telling the zombie to check its surroundings, see if there's that path on the left, and if so, make that turn. And then we use the move forward block inside this repeat uh, to get it to keep moving forward as long as it just wants to go straight. Uh, then when there's the turn, the if block will tell it to make this turn to the left. And you can see if we do that, if we're taking the turn to the left and otherwise moving forward, we'll achieve our goal. So it's an example of using an if statement, which is really a, a fundamental concept in computer programming. Uh, one of the first things I learned was uh, uh, how to write a program to play tic-tac-toe. And you know, so I had if statements to say, OK, if the other person is about to win, go ahead and, and block that uh, spot. Uh, so have fun learning how to use if statements. It's a, a key concept. Understanding coding is a weapon. It's like a superpower. It's better than a superpower. Hi, I'm Carly. I work in fashion, but I also consider myself a student. I'm fascinated by understanding how things work. I wanted to learn how the world of technology is built. So I started to learn how to code in my spare time because it wasn't offered to me as a class when I was in school. I grew up in a house with three sisters, and all four of us were never encouraged to learn how to code. And that's the one thing that I wish someone would have said, just take one class. I always thought I would be following my father's footsteps and going to medicine. My dad's a doctor, and I love math. I ended up having a career in fashion. You know, there's not much math that I use in my day-to-day -day life for my work, but I am fascinated by, by computer sciences, by understanding programming, by understanding how things are built. I happen to be a closeted super nerd. So I personally have begun learning how to program on my own because programming is the language of the future and of now. I wish I would have started learning at 13, but it doesn't matter how old you are, you can always start learning jump into it, learn, just try and take one class, give it one hour. It's amazing what you can learn in one hour. It's important to break that stigma of thinking that it's not cool to be smart. If you can understand, much less speak code, you can build anything. By the way, the games are so much fun. I spend so much time like playing with the different games that are probably targeted to like 12 year olds. No, there's this funny story where, um, so I like going for walks around, I mean, it's, it's California, right? So it's, it's beautiful. And um, there's this one loop that, that I used to go on when, when I was at our last office where there, there were these few kids who they'd, they'd ride their bikes and, and every day when I'd, when I'd walk by this one, um, this one guy, he'd ask me, he'd just like yell questions at me, like, hey, um, Mr. Zuckerberg. I'm like, Mr. Zuckerberg, what? Um, I, I want to learn how to program. What should, what should I do? Should I try to, um, like, what, what system should I learn how to program? I'm like, well, what, what do you have, a Windows computer or, or a Mac or a phone or what do you want? He's like, well, I, I, like, I want to build an iPhone app. I'm like, all right, great. So um, go, go download the, the developer kit for iPhone. So then, you know, I'd come back. A couple of days later, and, and he just said, "Yeah, my loop." And he's like, "Okay, so I went to go download the developer kit, and my mom says, um, you know, it's ninety nine dollars. Should I get it?" And I'm like, "Yeah, tell your mom you should get it." So he's like, "Okay, I'll go do that." And then you know, a few days later, I'd come back, and he's like, "All right, I got the developer kit, and my mom says I I I, I can get it. Um, so now, what's the what's the first thing that I should get started doing?" So I'm like, "All right, well, first try to learn this, and then like this would just go on for weeks." And I, I can't say I didn't teach him how to program, but. Uh, but it was really gratifying to know that 
um, in some small way, maybe I could help out um, teaching the next generation of folks who are going to become engineers. When I first got rolling, it was kind of easier back then in some ways and harder in other ways. Uh, the, the actual code was easier back then. At the same time today, you have much better resources. You have code.org, you have uh, search results for pretty much any tech question you would ever want to ask. You have school courses, you, you, you might even have teachers today uh, that know how to code, understand how the internet works and can teach you. That's a, a pretty incredible resource that I didn't have around me growing up. Probably the first website I ever built was just copying the HTML code from yahoo.com and just editing it until it was David's website. And you know, the more you do that, the more you actually start to learn the language yourself and you're able to start to build the stuff from scratch. Or putting your, putting your work out there early, even before it's perfect, even before you really have found your voice yet and know what you're trying to say, is a, an amazing feeling and an amazing learning experience and a chance to start to connect with people who will kind of take you the rest of the way there. But if you have any aspirations of putting your idea, putting your work out there into the world, start now. <laughs>